Thank you. And I'm pleased to be here today with our State Attorney General, Rob Bonta, as he makes his fifth stop on a larger tour of California's 13 largest cities to host these important roundtable discussions on crime in California. We're also joined by our Assistant City Manager, Chris Martinez, City Attorney Fader Norton, Chief of Police Larry Gonzalez, and an incredible group of community leaders representing our diverse city who I would like to thank for participating in an earlier roundtable discussion. It's fitting that we're here today on the Greer Pavilion, named after our local civil rights leaders, Dr. Barnett and Eleanor Jean Greer. Surrounded by other inspirational quotes from iconic leaders, including Cesar Chavez, Chief Joseph, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and others. This place, right outside my office, which I love because I get to see it every day and it reminds me of the work we do here in our city. It represents a focal point for our city, highlighting our diversity, creativity, innovation, and dedication to each other and our common humanity. It's the perfect place for coming together and recommitting ourselves to the ongoing work of building a safer city. So I'd like to thank the Attorney General for this statewide tour and for coming to Riverside to meet representatives of our community. By having residents at the table, you're expanding the conversation to hear from those that have personal experience on trends in our city and how we can do better at addressing hate throughout the state. The data presented by the Attorney General show a statewide trend that indicates hate crimes are on the rise in California. And while Riverside has not seen the increase in hate crimes that other portions of the state have, our city is not immune to hate or crimes that are fueled by this hate. Therefore, the statewide reality cannot be ignored here at home. So Riverside needs to play its part in addressing the statewide increase by being a resource to other cities and our state partners and share what we've done as a community to prevent hate crimes from happening. I want to thank our participants for coming to the table, for bringing their experience, ideas, and solutions to this important discussion. Working alongside each of you in our community gives me great resolve that the right people are at work in our city to make positive change. Finally, I'd like to thank our Attorney General for engaging with and listening to the City of Riverside. Thank you for being a great partner and resource at the state level. We look forward to this continued partnership, and you're always welcome in Riverside. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to our California Attorney General, Rob Bonta. Well, thank you, Mayor Locke Dawson, for hosting. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you for having me here in Riverside. I'm honored to be here uh, with you and Chief Gonzalez and all the incredible leaders that um, are standing here uh, beside me and that we just had an opportunity to have a wonderful conversation with inside, addressing a challenge that we know is, is so important right now in, in so many places in this nation, in this state, a full-on state of emergency, a state of crisis, um, and that is the rise in hate, the rise in hate crimes. Uh, rise in hate violence. And um, I really appreciated hearing from our uh, leaders here in Riverside about their approach and uh, focusing on prevention and, and proactive steps to uh, avoid hate uh, incidents from happening in the first place. And they've been very successful in that regard as we uh, have seen stats across the, the state and the nation rise, 107% uh, increase statewide in California when it comes to anti-API hate, 31% uh, increase when it comes to uh, all uh, different acts of hate violence and hate crimes. Uh, here in Riverside, they've had uh, 14, 15 hate crimes uh, last year, uh, uh, which is 14 or 15 too many, uh, but it's lower than uh, relatively than other cities. And so uh, one of the things I was very interested in learning about today is uh, what is what have they been doing uh, to achieve those results? How is that different than what other cities um, uh, have been working on, and I found that it's their focus on on prevention, on uh, on being proactive, on education early on, on having hard conversations with communities, uh, on 
predicting and expecting where hate violence could occur and taking steps to prevent it from happening. And so, uh, you know, we all uh, support our victims. I, I'm very victim-centered in my approach. If someone is hurt or harmed or abused, uh, a victim of a hate crime, we want to make sure we have victim services. But of course, we want the victim, uh, avoid having a victim in the first place if we can. And Riverside uh, has done that very well with their approach. And so um, I also know that some of the work that they're doing can be expanded uh, and that with investments from uh, the state and the Department of Justice, we can help uh, increase their impact and scale their work so that more lives are touched in a positive way. Uh, more hate is avoided in the first place and we avoid hate crimes. So, you know, r right now we are in a state of emergency, state of crisis statewide and in this nation when it comes to hate. Um, we have too many people, so many people, who uh, fear doing everyday things, going for a walk, um, taking their kids to school, going to the store, um, going to church, and they have that constant worry, constant anxiety that, um, will I be next? Uh, will I be the next victim of a hate crime? Will I be attacked because of who I am, how I look, where I'm from, who I love, or how I pray? And that's unacceptable. That's wrong. We need to change that. And we need to come together uh, to be able to learn from one another, to listen to each other, to identify best practices. And um, that's why I am on a uh, statewide 13 big city uh, tour of roundtables and discussions to hear uh, what locals have identified to be successful approaches and best practices to, to addressing hate. And I uh, very much appreciate um, what's being done right here in Riverside and have some good ideas for how to support their work and, and how to scale some of it so that others outside of Riverside can be touched for the better uh, as well. And in the Department of Justice, um, you know, one of the things I want to make really clear as the California Attorney General with the full weight uh, and authority of the law and the state constitution is in California and throughout this nation there's no room for hate. Not here, not anywhere, not now, not ever and we need to take steps and take action to make that real. And in the Department of Justice, we started a racial justice bureau to take on racial injustice, to take on the forces of hate. We are working with our local law enforcement partners throughout the state of California to help ensure that uh, they are using best practices uh, and have the support and resources to identify and investigate hate crimes when they occur. We are asking our district attorney's offices throughout the state to work with community groups and have a hate crime unit uh, to address and take on hate crimes. Uh, we have started something new in my office that has been different than in past years where we have a care unit, community awareness, response and engagement to get out of our buildings and into the community to sit uh, in conversation with community members to hear what their biggest challenges are, what are the struggles that they have and how we can help and be a partner and to co-create solutions with them. Um, and that's just our, our, our down payment on, on getting this work done, a foundation that we're laying uh, as we build uh, up uh, our efforts to do more with our, our cities uh, across the, the state and our leaders in, in the community throughout the state. And let me just end with this. When, uh, you know, hate, unfortunately, is not new. Um, in this state, in this nation, uh, it's been with us since our founding. Um, but also what is not new is solidarity, coming together, rising up uh, to push back against the forces of hate and to create and embrace and make real the community that we want and that we deserve, one that's full of dignity and respect and inclusion and equity and justice. And I think we're at our best uh, here in California and in this country when we work together, when we reach out and extend a hand of partnership and that hand is received and we work together to combine forces. Um, I always, often in moments like these when our people are, are hurting, when our values are under attack, I often think of the Martin Luther King Jr. statement from letter from a Birmingham City Jail when he talked about our inescapable network of mutuality and our single garment of destiny, that we are inherently tied together. Uh, your success, uh, your future, uh, your ability to thrive is inextricably connected to mine and that we will rise together uh, or not at all. And um, there's just, there's no us and them, there's just us, all of us in our beautiful diversity. And um, 
and that we will, uh, we will rise together. So uh, I look forward to continuing our work together. Uh, I'm inspired by what I've heard today, what I've learned. I'm appreciative and in admiration of the great work being done here in Riverside, and I look forward to being a partner uh, to support your great work and to scale it so others can be touched for the better. And let me now introduce Stephen Merrill, Professor, CSU San Bernardino, Center for the Study of Hate and Extremism. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to thank Mayor Dawson, the Attorney General uh, Bonta, uh, and all the participants of the roundtable event today. Um, I think it's important to recognize that, as the Attorney General said, hate is not a new phenomenon. And it's not unexpected. So people that harbor bias and hate are responsive to triggers within society. And we've seen that in terms of increased numbers in hate crimes. And again, Riverside has done a particularly good job. Uh, thank you to the Chief of Police for the contributions today. 20 plus years of trying to build uh, relationships with the community and try and build trust with the community. Um, in terms of the Center uh, for the Study of Hate and Extremism. Uh, we're a local partner. We are based at California State University and we're keen to work with the city of Riverside uh, and also with the uh, Attorney General's Office in California to try and monitor hate crime across the state and also uh, try and look at what works best around the world, in the United States, within the state and city by city. And today's been an excellent sort of example of when people come together and express their concerns and provide their uh, expertise in terms of what will work for specific components of dealing with hate. So it doesn't happen in, um, hate doesn't happen in a vacuum. So we know that there are triggers and we know that we can deal with, in defend, uh, with defend, uh, offenders and also with hate groups some of the rhetoric around hate and stimulating uh, hate offences. Um, and again, partnership work can deliver significant results. And the Attorney General's Office has done a great job very recently, Governor Newsom signing uh, the uh, Commission on the State of Hate Bill and the, um, the Education Bill in terms of ethnic studies. We're trying to deal with the causes of hate not just the policing responses to hate, which are extremely important as well. So again, I think it's been a very positive day for all the attendees at the round table. I'd like to thank everybody that attended and contributed today. And again, I'd like to thank um, Mayor Dawson for the invitation and the Attorney General for being here today uh, to show support and to show leadership. Thank you. And now I'm gonna pass over to uh, Malek Bendelholm, the Executive Director of the Islamic Shura Council of Southern California. Good afternoon, and thank you all for being here. I would like to thank the Mayor Dawson and Attorney General Bonta for creating this amazing group of people that you see before you and some who had to leave for, for other um, programs, but through this amazing group, through coming together, we will be able to make lasting change. The Muslim community in particular is, is uh, extremely interesting because of its diversity, that many individuals within the Muslim community face hate, face discrimination, not only because of their religion, but also because of maybe their cultural or racial background. One third of the Muslim community is African American, and about 60% of the Muslim community is, an, is from an immigrant background. So they tend to face hate on multiple ends, and this can exacerbate the problem, particularly within our community. One of the largest segments, particularly within the Muslim community, actually is Hispanic as well. Yet, over the last 20 years, the Muslim community, despite all of that diversity, has been the target of hate. And we have found that over the past 10 years, between 50 to 53 percent of Muslim students, particularly within California schools, have either said that they felt unsafe 
or that they felt that they were particularly targeted because of their religious background. And as the director of the Shura Council, which is an umbrella of mosques and Muslim organizations all throughout Southern California, we see that this is consistent throughout California, unfortunately. Thankfully, here within the city of Riverside, so much work is being done, like convenings today, that will help curtail the progression of hate that is unfortunately so pervasive within our community, particularly through the rhetoric that tends to come around during midterm elections. And it is so important for us to have these types of convenings so that when these trigger points start to actually come up, we can be pre proactive and try and stop these instances of hate before they happen. That is why we are so excited for this gathering today and for the work that will come from this group. So again, I want to thank everyone who took part in the convening today. I want to thank the mayor, the attorney general, and I look forward to all of our action moving forward to help stop hate here in California. Thank you. And now I will hand it back over to the mayor. Do we have time? Do we have time for some comments from Dr. Cortez? He was our moderator today and he runs the Mayor's Multicultural Forum. I'm just wondering if you just would like to just say a few words. Please, just please. Okay. <laughs> and then we can move to the Okay. Uh, well, I think one of the things that happened this morning that you, many of you didn't see is that folks came together and spoke out honestly and didn't just look at the problem, but came up with ideas for moving ahead. And one of the things that struck me the most was the idea of capturing the narrative that we have got to get ahead of the game. It's too late once hate is out there. We've got to intercede, get ahead of the hate, and begin to build the kinds of conversations in elementary schools, in high schools, in colleges, in religious institutions, in all kinds of forums that say we need to work together as a community and that hate has no place in it. And I think the Attorney General heard very clearly that Riverside is the kind of place that can start the revolution against hate. And I hope we get that kind of support. And I hope this city takes the lead in that revolution, uh, like it's taken the lead in so many things. Thank you. All right, I think we have time for questions now. So I'm going to ask the Attorney General to step up and we can take some questions. Uh, well, I'll, I'll say th this is my fifth roundtable discussion, and I'm impressed every time, impressed in a different way from the, the leaders who are there. Um, and one of the things that it is always, um, it always impacts me is, is that a lot of what is said is, is, is often personal, um, often painful, and always powerful. And people, uh, leaders are talking from their heart about often their own lived experience, uh, their own um, struggles with hate, as no one has, you know, been free of, uh, from, free from the sting of hate. And, and for some of us, like myself, you know, this is personal. This isn't an intellectual exercise. Uh, people who've suffered hate know what it is, or who have seen loved ones or friends, family suffer from hate, or have a community that relies on them to keep them safe from and free of hate. Uh, that's always powerful to me. And, um, and through that pain, we've seen a call for change and a commitment to create solutions, not just to um, share out about the pain, but to say, what do we do next? 
we want to end this pain for ourselves, for the people we love, for the people we care about, for our communities generally. What are real things we can do that can move the needle? And I've, I've really appreciated that spirit to turn pain into action and um, from very difficult experiences look for and identify and pursue solutions. Any other questions? <laughs> So, so the question is about how do we have more accurate reporting of hate crimes and some cities have hate crime statistics that are zero when m many believe that may be not be the, the case in actuality. And I think what's really important is that there be a way to report a hate crime that is, is trusted, that uh, people know will lead to action, that they will be heard. Uh, that they won't be forced to wait forever on, on a phone line and relive their trauma and tell multiple people about the pain they just suffered and uh, that it be someone that they're reporting to who they can trust and not fear retaliation uh, or be victimized in another way after already being the victim of a hate crime. And, and that looks like a lot of different things. Some people are very comfortable calling law enforcement. That's who they feel uh, will keep them safe. That's who they trust. Uh, others, not the same. They might want to call a community-based organization that they've worked with, that they know uh, to be uh, working for them and fighting for them, who's earned their trust. Um, and I think we probably need multiple places and ways for people to, to report, and then we need to be able to figure out as a, um, as a community how to collate and pull together those, those stats to be able to really get our hands on what's, what's, what's out there. We know there's underreporting. You know, we've had huge spikes in reporting of hate crime, and we know it's underreported. It's higher than it is, and it's high. And so um, really understanding what's out there can help drive solutions. We talk about data-driven solutions, evidence-based policy, and we need the evidence uh, that's true and accurate uh, so that we can really drill in, into it and identify solutions. So I think, I think trust is key uh, when reporting. Any other questions? Well, thank you all for being here. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.